Hey guys, MJ Rookie Forge here, bring you the long awaited drop pod video. This is something everyone's been asking for, so here we are finally. Drop Pod Bay Alpha Pod 7. We are here aboard our uh, classified frigate and bringing you the scripting tutorial and everything that you need to know to make these drop pods work for you. Because otherwise, they're working for the man, and you need to stick it to the man. Anyways, here beside us is our good friend Raptor086, part of the Halo Spark Forge network. We are here to teach you the ins and outs of everything you need to know. We're going to first start by talking about the chair and its retraction and extraction. We're going to be talking about the pod and its door, and those will be the basic features and how they drop. Then we'll be talking about advanced features such as the timed lights, as well as the way the door flies off, as you saw in the video. The door will actually land in a more natural way than ever seen before in a scripting manner, I suppose would be the correct term for that. And uh, we'll show you how to get that functioning properly. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and give it to Raptor. But before I do that, I actually need to remind you guys that there is a bit of uh, scripting disorganization and what I mean by that is we've gone through several iterations over the past two months is it two months Raptor do you think yeah two updates ago so we got these uh, drop pods about two updates ago about two months so, uh, give or take and so we're gonna go ahead and talk about that the uh, we have gone over several iterations of the drop pod several functioning non-functioning and other versions and this is the final version so the scripting you see is partly remnant of uh, what has been left over from that the polish is uh, there however there are some scripts that may jump around a bit uh, just in the channels though everything works appropriately and we have refined it to be its optimal form however if you want in your version definitely consider taking and making your own channel so starting with alpha and moving up very uh, very important that you understand and keep track and when you're doing channels make sure you write down the channels you're going to be using very important all right, uh, again, without further ado, Raptor, please take it away and tell the children what they want. All right, guys, so let's get right into this. Um, the first thing I want to do here is just go ahead and hit the switch so that you can watch the drop pod get started. Um, as soon as you push the switch, the mongoose comes out of the drop pod, giving the Spartan a chance to sit down on it before it pulls him back in, <clears throat> and then the door closes over him. Um, so just to give you that, that quick quick little additional demonstration because that's the first part we're going to talk about. I want to break this up into a few chunks. So the very first thing we're going to discuss is just that that mongoose itself and how it associates with the switch. So let's look at the scripts on the mongoose here. Okay, so the first script on this mongoose is going to be on power state bravo. Um, now, of course, you can use multiple cha any channel you want for these. I su definitely suggest writing them down as you go when you're creating this. So you certainly don't have to have it on Bravo channel. But this is one we use for this one. Um, this is the script that actually pulls the mongoose out of the drop pod. So it will be on power state Bravo off, move offset. And the local movement is going to be on for this one um, because that's that we want that, that movement to pull the mongoose back on that, that X asset, axis in relation to the mongoose rather than in relative to the position in the, the environment as a whole. So that's why we have local movement on for that. So on the X forward axis we have it moving negative 5.5 degrees, so essentially moving backwards um, to pull it out of the drop pod. Now the opposite of that script would be on power state bravo on to position reset and that also will take just one second. Now essentially that pushes the mongoose back into the drop pod on its original position, um, hence the position reset. Um, so essentially those are the two scripts on the mongoose that make it come in and out. Now looking at the switch real quick, script number one on the switch, on interaction, power set, bravo, off. So that is the first, that essentially moves that mongoose out of the drop pod just as the off bravo's power set, 
was set on that mongoose. Script number two on this switch is another on interaction. This time it's sending a message to golf. So we're gonna talk about what that does here in just a second. So let's look behind this wall and you can see a bunch of little grunts that we have as little relay, relay timers. Um, so if you remember that switch, as well as moving the mongoose, it also sends a message to the channel golf. And that interacts with this grunt. On message received golf, it will despawn. So when that grunt despawns, four seconds later, it will respawn. Hence the respawn time up here, on death deletion, four seconds. Then it will respawn. And that's basically our timer there because we have another script, on spawn, power set bravo on. And if you remembered from the mongoose, that power set bravo on is what repositioned the mongoose back into the drop pod. So when that grunt despawns, four seconds later it will respawn, power set bravo on, which pulls the drop pod back in four seconds after it comes out. The next script is also an on spawn, one out. and it's message send hotel. And basically that's just to further down the chain that relay to just send the relay further down the chain. So we're going to look at the next grunt which will receive that message hotel. So on message received hotel this one will actually despawn. So that first red grunt will spawn it will despawn this one which has an on death deletion respawn time of four seconds and then when that respawns it has a script on spawn power set echo on as well as a message send India when it spawns, which that message send script is going to further down the chain, as you might predict. So this is kind of a chain of events here. Um, this one receives the message India and it despawns. It has a four second respawn on, on it, and then it also has an on spawn script that kind of goes down the line. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna pass by that real quick because we're gonna revisit those. Just wanted you to understand that the third script on those grunts just sends it down the line there. Um, the chain of events so it, it takes it from red to yellow and then to green and so on <clears throat> excuse me so looking back at the switch just to, to quickly recap that's essentially what happens to the mongoose on interaction you know, power set bravo off which pulls the mongoose out of the drop pod there um, and then pushes it back in um, on the respawn of that first grunt now let's get to what happens with that drop pod door. So once it comes back in, that's associated with this, this monk, uh, grunt here. So it's on spawn, power set echo on. That's gonna be the script that pulls the drop pod door down and closing the Spartan in the drop pod. So let's take a quick look at that door. Now that's positioned up there. This has a lot of scripts on it, so we just need to look at the first couple that are associated with closing the door initially. On power state, echo on, which is again associated with that grunt, that second yellow grunt up there. When it's, after despawning, it will respawn and, and turn echo on. So, our first script on the door. I'll try not to be repetitive here, guys. I'm just trying to be thorough. We have an on power state, echo on, and it will move offset. And this is offset on the vertical axis and negative, because we want it to go down, negative 8.5 units. And lo again, local movement is on because we want it to move downward associated with the position of the object, or the, the uh, orientation of the object itself, rather than simply its position in the environment. In this case, it wouldn't matter because it's actually placed vertically. But So that's that, that script. The rest of the scripts we'll look at in a minute. Um, but that's that's all that needs to happen with that door is it just needs to lower down in closing the spartan into the drop pod now looking back at this grunt that's our on power set echo on and then looking back at script three as we said before that's an on spawn message send india which sends a message down the chain to the next grunt in its script, on message received India, it will despawn, triggering that four second respawn time, which is our timer for the next event to occur. And when it spawns, it will power set delta on. Now, this delta on is the script that triggers the actual dropping of the drop pod. So that's the one to, to really pay attention to as we move, move through this. So just kind of try to remember down the line how we get to that point. 
um, power set delta on will trigger a variety of different events that that are coincide with the dropping of that drop pod. So let's look at the scripts on the drop pod itself. On power state delta on, we will move offset on the vertical Z axis, negative 305 units. So that drops it down to its position on the ground. We have it set to take two seconds to do so. And again, this is local movement on because we want it to just move down from the position of the, the actual drop pod, just move straight down. Um, the other script is the opposite, delta on power state, delta off, and it's a position reset. Now that's, this script is not critical to the actual function of the drop pod, because once it's down, you don't want it to be able to come back up into the ship in game, but this is an important script so that when you're testing it or when you're setting this up in Forge, you'll be able to, you know, reset it and try it again, or just, you know, make sure it all works and you'll want to add to it as it can, you, you make it more and more complex. Um, with the lights and whatnot, so you want to be able to always reset that so that you can do it multiple times in Forge. But we'll talk more about resets scripts in just a minute as well. So that's essentially that drop pod has the on power state delta on script to drop down, but also the mongoose and the door are going to have those same scripts. So looking at the mongoose, you're going to have on power state alpha on, move offset negative 305 units, two seconds, same as the drop pod itself because you want it to travel exactly in the same way as the drop pod does. Now if we look back at the door, you're going to notice that the door also has that exact same script. So, that's the echo script that drops it in over the drop pod. But then on power state delta on, move offset, negative 305 units over two seconds. So it's the exact same script as is on the mongoose as well as the drop pod itself. So this will drop it to the ground. Now let's look back at these grunts real quick. Um, so we've, we've reviewed what goes down that front line of grunts there, and that's that's our, our relay system set, setting up the all of the pre-launch or pre-drop scripts. Now these other grunts are associated with the drops, the lighting setup, as well as the door busting off of the drop pod once it hits. So let's look at this grunt. On power state delta on, it will despawn. So at the same time that the drop pod actually drops to the ground, this, this grunt despawns. Now of course it has an on death deletion timer of three seconds. So three seconds after it drops, it will spawn and send a message, Sierra. So if you remember, the drop pod takes two seconds to hit the ground, and then it will be on the ground for one second longer before this grunt respawns and sends the message to Sierra. So just remember that that's the last thing we left off, and I will meet you at the ground where we will discuss the scripting on the drop pod door that blows off of the front and allows the Spartan to exit the pod. All right, guys, so we are down here on the ground, and we are gonna take a quick look at what happens as the drop pod comes to the ground. As you can see, that barrel spawns in, and you'll see fire spawn in, which destroys the barrel, triggers the drop pod door to blow off and reveal the Spartan inside. Um, of course, there was no Spartan inside this time, but um, so here it's been reset. It's about to come down again, and I'm going to just go ahead and grab the barrel out of the fire before the fire spawns in and has a chance to destroy it. And that way we can look at the fire as well as the barrel, and I can break down the scripting that's involved with those pieces. So you might have just noticed that the fire was a little too close to the drop pod right there. It destroyed the mongoose that was inside. Usually that wouldn't happen because the fire would despawn before it has a chance to do enough damage to the mongoose, but in this case I moved the barrel so the fire didn't despawn, and you'll see why in a second. But so here we are looking at the barrel and the fire separately. Um, typically the barrel would have spawned in and then very quickly been destroyed by the fire um, and also despawned the fire with when that, that occurs, but uh, I separated them so that we can look at the scripts. So first looking at the barrel here, um, one of the scripts on the barrel, it happens to be script 3 here, but yeah, typically it would probably be the first script you put on the barrel, would be on power state delta on, 
and that will spawn this barrel. And if you recall, on Power State Delta On is the same script that actually started the descent of the drop pod from the Infinity or whatever drop ship you've got going on above. So as soon as that drop pod starts to drop, this barrel spawns in on the ground. So you, so you might have noticed it spawn before the barrel, the uh, drop pod even hit the ground. Um, so that, that occurs at that moment. Um, just a moment later, you'll see the fire spawn in to destroy the barrel. So let's look at the script on the fire that makes that happen. So if you recall from before, the last script we talked about from above was the message on spawn message send Sierra from that grunt spawning in, and that's what spawns in the fire here. So this fire has an on message received Sierra spawn script. Um, when this fire spawns, it will destroy the, the barrel here, and that triggers the, the sequence of actions that makes the door blow off of the drop pod. Um, it also will despawn this fire. So if you look back at the fire real quick, it has an on message received tango despawn script. And sorry, I had to pause the video there for a second because I almost skipped over that script when I uh, captured that video. So um, what you, that, that on message received tango despawn script, uh, it receives the message from this barrel, which also has an on destroyed send message tango script on it as well. It also, as you just saw, has an on message, or I'm sorry, on destroyed send message uniform. And that uniform portion of the script is what triggers this door to blow off. So, on the drop pod door, you have on message received uniform rotate offset 90 degrees roll. And that takes 0.3 seconds to do so. And that 90 degree roll just basically just as you could ex expect, it rolls it forward 90 degrees, so it goes from facing vertically to to where the closed portion that you're looking at now is facing the ground, and then the open part is facing the sky. Now, that's not the only script that is involved with the door blowing off. Otherwise, it would just roll in place and be sitting next to the drop pod. So, also on message received uniform, it has a move offset action, and it will move forward 20.5 units and it will move 18.5 units vertically. And that vertical portion of it is just to account for the elevation change on the slope that it's currently sitting on. So it will move the 20.5 units forward away from the drop pod and technically 18.5 units upward because you don't want it to be embedded into the ground. Um, so let's look at that one more time. You have forward, and keep in mind this is all local movement on because we're wanting it to move in relation to the the position of the, the drop pod door and the way that it's oriented rather than just its position in the general environment. Um, so when that occurs, it will roll the 90 degrees and it will move forward out, as you can see the cursor going kind of along the ground, um, as well as slightly upward just so that it's not embedded into the ground based on the current slope. So if you're if you're putting this on your map, you might have to play around with the coordinates in order to get it just right. It did take, take some tinkering as we were setting this up, but um, it's not too bad, especially if you write down your coordinates and actually test it out and move it around. Um, so keep in mind on this barrel, as I talked about before, it has an on destroyed message send tango, and that's what actually despawns the fire. So we can look back at that real quick. Um, on message received tango despawn. Now that was an extra script as we were just kind of keeping things organized. I wanted to keep it separate. Um, but technically you could just have that message sent to uni uniform and uh, then have the fire act on that same channel um, on message received uniform despawn rather than tango, but I just kept it separate for organization purposes. And we had enough scripts to work with. So I just shot that barrel real quick just so that you could see the door blow off as it was destroyed. Typically the fire would destroy it and then the drop pod door would do its rotation and its movement, um, simulating that it was blown off of the pod. So the only other portion of the scripting on these drop pods and drop pod door and whatnot to look at are the uh, reset uh, scripts. Um, so if you'll look at the opposite of what sent the drop pod on power state delta off, it has a position reset and that would just suck the drop pod right back up into the drop ship. 
um, and you're going to see the same script here on the drop pod door. And these are not necessary to the actual function of the drop pod or the door, of course, but um, it's a good idea to have these on there so that when you're forging or when you're putting all of this together, you can have a reset button. Um, in order to just kind of reset everything to its original position and run that full script over again um, Just to make sure it works properly. All right guys So we're back up in the station and the drop pod sequence has just started and I want you guys to watch the lights that Progressively change color here up the up the scale there So we got red and then red and as the mongoose is coming into the drop pod the colors can change in sequence the drop pod door drops and we got the last yellow light and then as the drop pod drops the light turns green um, so this next part of the tutorial we're going to show you how to set up these lights now of course this is not essential um, it's not crucial to the whole process here but it's an option that kind of just adds a next level of detail and makes it kind of look that much more immersive um, so we'll now talk about how those lights progress as well as that glass door shutting over the drop pod so let's look um, so looking back at our initial switch, it has an on interaction message send golf in addition to the other side of the script that initiates the drop pod drop on the mongoose. Um, so that message send golf, just like this line of grunts here, um, had a kind of a progression that where they kind of were relayed timers. Um, we have a whole nother progression with these other grunts that are associated with those lights and whatnot. So this first red one is on message received golf um, and then it will just go down the line, similar to the, the last set of grunts. Um, so this on, sorry, um, this on message received golf will despawn, and then two seconds later it will respawn, and then it has an on spawn message send Lima script. Um, and then if you look at the next grunt on the line, this will have, as you might have predicted at this point, an on message received Lima despawn, and an on spawn message send Papa, and on down the line, the next grunt, the second yellow grunt, will have an on message received Papa despawn, and it has its two second respawn time, on death deletion, two second respawn. Um, and the second script on spawn message send Victor. And so on down the line. On message received Victor and two second respawn time and an on spawn message send Whiskey. Um, so I think you get the point here, um, but we'll look at the last one anyway. It has its on message received Whiskey despawn two second respawn time and then on spawn message send x-ray. So before we progress any further, um, I'm just going to let you watch all of these grunts spawn and, or, and despawn and spawn as the process occurs. So Rookie's down there, he's going to push the switch for us and just watch the grunts spawn and despawn in sequence. Um, I know this doesn't probably mean much um, but you can just kind of see what the process looks like and you know as you put those scripts together and figure it out um, it, it will make more sense to you I am sure um, but all of those things happen rather quickly but they're timed just right when you look at those respawn times so as these grunts spawn and despawn um, their their respawn is associated each one with one of those lights that we just talked about. So let's go through those those scripts and check it out. So on message received golf despawn is this very first one. It receives that message from the switch. Um, but then it sends the message Lima. So if we look at the first light in the sequence, this has a script which is on message received golf, which is actually the initial switch it will color set and it will change the secondary color to red which is the glow color that you see um, so that so when you per first push that initial switch it turns that first bar to red as well as uh, despawns that grunt and starts the sequence so as we started to say then the next grunt spawn sends message to lima which will then change the second light to red so we see on message received lima color set and we have the secondary set to red. 
Then the third light has a similar script which says on message received Papa color set also red. So we have three red lights there. Um, just like if you remember from this grunt, it has its on spawn or on message received Papa despawn. Two seconds later, it respawns. And on spawn message send Victor. So if we look at the fourth light, you guessed it, it will have an on message received. Pull up that script here. On message received Victor color set. And this time the secondary color was yellow because we want that light to be yellow. So then the second to last light that comes on has a script that says on message received whiskey color set yellow. And the last one should be x-ray and it will turn green. So let's look on message received x-ray color set green. Uh, and that was associated with this last and final grunt. Um, when it spawns, it had the on spawn message send x-ray. So it just kind of uh, a chain of events that spawn and despawn these grunts in sequential order to coincide with those those lights and all of the, the sequence of actions that sets the drop pods drop in motion. So in just a second, we'll take a quick look back at the grunts respawn times. But um, from the time from pushing the switch, then the mongoose coming out is four seconds. And that's because this first grunt, it has its on message received golf despawn. But then it takes four seconds before it will respawn and send the message to pull the mongoose back in. So that takes four seconds for that to occur. Um, same with this yellow grunt here. It has a four second respawn time, as does this green grunt, grunt. So there's four seconds from the mongoose coming out before it comes back in, and then four seconds from it going back in before the drop pod door drop. And that's basically how the timing works on that. So the same goes with the lights here. We're going to look at the two second respawn time of each of these grunts. And essentially that's just showing that it's, it's two seconds between the color change of each one of those lights. Um, and so some of those lights are going to directly cor correspond with the mongoose coming in or out of the drop pod. And some of those lights are going to come change color essentially in between those events occurring but it all come time is timed out in the end um, now there was one more script on each one of these lights and I'm gonna show that to you real quick and that is a color reset script essentially so it's an on message received tango and that's a color set uh, the basically the secondary color back to black um, which even though it's it looks white that's actually the color black right now because it doesn't have much glow um, and that that channel tango the on message received tango if you recall from before the tango script was from the barrel below being destroyed by the fire so at the same time that the barrel below is destroyed by the fire um, these lights all of them will receive the message tango and then color set back to black which is the state that you see them in right there Okay, so another script that I can't forget to mention is this little piece of blue glass that drops down and covers the drop pod right before it drops to the ground. And then it stays down and just leaves that space in enclosed so that once the drop pod's gone, Spartans can't just walk out of the hole. Um, so looking at that script, we have two of them on there. The first one is an on message received Papa move offset negative eight units on the Z vertical axis. It takes two seconds to do that. And we have local movement turned off in this case because we just want it to drop straight down toward the ground and, and not move in any other which way. Um, the other script is the on power state delta off and that just resets the position so that it's more associated with your reset button, which we'll talk about in just a second. So guys, I hope this wasn't too confusing. I know I spoke really quickly, but there were a lot of scripts to go through and I didn't want this to be an hour long video. So um, I, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me via Xbox Live. Of course, you can message me at Raptor086 and I'd be happy to answer some questions or maybe even jump in your map if you're setting this up and I'd be happy to help you out. But um, the last thing I wanted to say about those scripts, which I almost forgot, was our little reset terminal. And, a, and we embedded it in the wall here to kind of blend it in. But basically these scripts just on interaction, power set, delta, off. And if you recall, that was this, the reset position script on the 
drop pod and on the uh, drop pod door. Um, we also have the a couple of other scripts that are all just reset scripts on interaction message send Quebec. These are all just various scripts that that uh, and you, you see Tango there too. These are all scripts that are all resetting the whole process. Um, so like the Tango script, if you recall, the barrel explodes and sends message Tango, and that also resets all the colors of the lights. Um, so those are just all the various scripts that would essentially reset everything to its starting position. And I can't stress enough how that how important it is to write everything down and keep track of not only all of the scripts that you have going, but all of the, the states that you need those scripts to be in for the beginning of the whole process so that you can associate those with your reset switch. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to turn it back over to Rookie. And thanks again for bearing with me. I know this is super complex, but like I said, let me know if you have any questions. Back to you, Rookie. Hey, thanks, Raptor. And thank you guys, the subscribers and my viewers, for making this possible. Without you guys constantly here and watching my videos, and without you guys watching the first drop pod tutorial, you have made it a dream for me to actually make these drop pods work. Thank you, Raptor, for being a guest star on today's show, and being a very good overall voice in the community for how the scripting is done and how everything functions properly. If you guys haven't, go ahead and subscribe to Raptor and check him out. He's got a lot of great stuff. Or in the words of our wise leader, Brewski, he's got some rad, rad content over there, guys. So don't forget to check him out. It's super, super rad. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, if you haven't checked out Brewski either, I highly recommend that. Both of their names will be in the description under the Spark Forge Network team lists. So today we went over the drop pod basics, the lights, the advanced tutorials, all the timing you necessarily need, and everything that you could possibly imagine. All of it's there for you. If you have any questions, again, feel free to contact Raptor or I. We'll be able to help you in any way we can, and we'll even join your game if you need our help. File share is in the description below, or you can go ahead and go to my page, friend me, and then go to my files, my bookmarks, and it'll be at the top. Name will be on screen of the file. Spark Forge Network is proud to present this feature as we are growing in numbers. We just gained a couple channels recently and I'm glad and proud to be part of this team. And as always, remember ODSTs, feet first into hell. MJ Rookie, signing off. <laughs>